Did you know that there are creatures that can endure surprisingly harsh conditions? They can be boiled, frozen, compressed, dried, strongly irradiated, or even thrown into an acid bath and still survive. Almost every form of life on Earth could not survive even one of these acts of massacre. So what is the secret of these stubborn creatures? Could they be alien life that accidentally crashed onto Earth millions of years ago? The answer will be in this video. It is no coincidence that astronauts have to wear protective suits that are difficult to move or move around. The air ceiling is essentially a deadly environment for any organism that does not have a balance of atmospheric pressure. Outside, all the air in your chest will be drained. If you don't hold your breath, your lungs will swell and become dark red, and the gases dissolved in your blood will separate and form bubbles. The evaporation of water particles absorbs heat energy from your body and causes exposed parts such as the nose and mouth to freeze. Your body will swell, but it won't explode like in some movies. If you're lucky, you'll be unconscious for 10 or 15 seconds, and death will certainly come within 2 minutes. So what? But the cold vacuum also had to give way to a group of creatures called tardigrades, or more familiarly called tardigrades. In 2017, about 3,000 live tardigrades were dried and launched into space for Russia's Photon M3 mission. Among the tardigrades that traveled to space, some were exposed to a vacuum environment, while others were exposed to solar radiation about 1,000 times more intense than on Earth. After traveling in vacuum for 10 days, they were brought back to the parent planet and soaked in water. Strangely, 68% of the tardigrades protected from radiation were revived within just 30 minutes, and many of them were even able to reproduce normally. However, most of those exposed to solar radiation were permanently disabled, except for three of the nasium type. Radon's family is still being monitored, with no final conclusion yet. According to the flow of events, a group of tardigrades is said to have made the historic trip by clinging to the Israeli Beersheet Lunar Lander spacecraft launched in 2019. However, this ship encountered a problem and crashed straight into the moon. To satisfy curiosity about the tardigrade's ability to survive the accident, scientists tried to recreate the Beersheet accident on Earth. They placed frozen tardigrades in pellets and shot them with an air gun, a type of gun commonly used to simulate collisions. Water bears live in almost every environment on Earth, from Antarctica to the equator, in tropical rainforests, under ice, and even in the ocean. You can encounter tardigrades on a Himalayan mountain hike at an altitude of 6,000 m as well as in a submarine at a depth of 4,000 m below the ocean floor. Water bears are one of the animals with the largest altitudinal range in the world, up to 10,000 m. But more often you'll find them hiding in ponds and meadows, on stone walls and roofs, and in moss and ferns, where they feed on plant cells, bacteria, and other tiny organisms. Like other animals, tardigrades eat with their mouths and excrete feces through the anus located at the last part of the body. However, some tardigrade species can only excrete feces by molting and then leaving feces on their discarded cuticles. Typically, tardigrades mature after 3 to 6 molts and can molt up to 12 times during their lifetime, lasting from 3 to 30 months depending on the type. In contrast to the popularity of tardigrades in the modern world, the origin of these strange-looking creatures remains a great mystery, although the oldest fossil evidence of tardigrades has been found. Found inside Cretaceous amber only about 145 million years ago. However, these fossils are essentially identical to modern tardigrades, suggesting that their true ancestors may have lived in the Cambrian period more than 500 million years ago. If that's true, the tardigrade will hold an unprecedented record. This claim is similar to the claim that tardigrades are the only known animals to have survived all of the mass extinctions in Earth's history. The tardigrade lineage's accumulation of more than half a billion years of experience has given them the ability to exist between life and death, just as humans must strive and still overcome all adversities. Water bears simply stop living temporarily and wait for the adversity to pass. In extreme conditions such as extreme drought, freezing or lack of oxygen, tardigrades will actively activate a mode called hibernation. During hibernation, this tiny creature will automatically curl up and shrink, becoming a dry shell of itself and falling into a death-like state. They only retain about 1% of the water in their bodies and turn their metabolism down to about 0.1% of normal levels for half of their lives. The water in the body of a tardigrade cells is replaced by a sugar called trehalose, which acts as a backup battery to help the creature survive without need food or water for decades, even a century. When watered, water bears will return to their normal state after just a few hours. In addition to their ability to live as long as leeches in hibernation, tardigrades can withstand many extremely harsh conditions that would kill most other creatures. Some types of tardigrades can withstand extreme cold temperatures down to one hundredth of a degree Kelvin, which is extremely close to absolute zero, lowest theoretical temperature achievable for a material. 
At this temperature, the movement of the normally frenetic atoms in the tardigrade's body almost stops. Yet this creature still exists and what's even more amazing is that the tardigrade actually has a brain and somehow its brain was protected from those temperatures without being damaged. On the contrary, some other species can withstand extremely hot temperatures of up to 82.70 degrees Celsius for an hour or up to 150 degrees Celsius for a short period of time. I recommend that if you eat tardigrade hot pot, remember to dip them in boiling water for a bit. And if that wasn't impressive enough, tardigrades can be reheated and frozen multiple times in a row and still be fine. Without exaggeration, this is a creature born to be trampled. Some hibernating tardigrades can withstand pressure of up to 600 million pascals, which is about 6,000 times atmospheric pressure. To give you a better idea, the pressure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, the deepest place in the ocean, is about more than a thousand pascals. In other words, tardigrades can withstand pressure at the bottom of an ocean six times deeper than the ocean on Earth. And yet, tardigrades can withstand radiation hundreds of times higher than a lethal dose. The tardigrade's DNA strands are wrapped in a protective protein that acts like a radiation shield, called a DNA damage suppressor. When the damage suppressor was grafted onto human cells, it prevented radiation-induced DNA damage by up to 40%. Thus, dry tardigrades can withstand extremely hot and cold temperatures, survive being immersed in organic solutions, be exposed to toxic radioactive environments, and withstand pressure. Extreme highs and lows such as the vacuum of space, it would not be an exaggeration to say that if any organism could survive a global mass extinction event caused by astrophysical events, such as such as a supernova explosion or a collision with a large meteorite, it could only be a tardigrade. And the secret seems to lie in their carefully guarded DNA. Most animals contain only a small amount of extracellular DNA, but tardigrades have 17 or 50 percent of their genome immobile, making them the animal with the largest amount of extracellular DNA in the world body. It appears that tardigrades collect extracellular DNA fragments from bacteria, fungi, and plants and synthesize them into their genomes. Scientists believe this is one of the factors responsible for their extraordinary endurance and survival. And the list of achievements of tardigrades does not stop there, as scientists recently announced that they have put them into a state of quantum entanglement. First, scientists captured a tardigrade and froze it to near absolute zero. Then, a hibernating tardigrade was placed between two electrode plates of the conducting circuit. To create a quantum qubit, the tardigrade is paired with a qubit. The frequency of the qubit has been changed. Then, the quantum dimension between the tardigrade and this qubit is further paired with a second qubit so that the two qubits become entangled with each other. In many subsequent experiments, the frequencies of both the qubit and the tardigrade changed in parallel, like a synchronous quantum system. In quantum mechanics, if you have a pair of entangled particles, information about the state of one particle will immediately affect the state of the other particle, even if they are thousands of light years apart. After 17 days of experiments, only one of the three frozen tardigrades was able to awaken, while the other two died. The team claims that the living bear is the first organism to achieve quantum entanglement. However, this statement immediately faced opposition from the scientific community. Physicists explain that although it sounds strange, this is not quantum entanglement in any sense. A qubit is an electrical circuit and the frozen tardigrade is like an insulator that will change the frequency of the circuit according to the laws of classical electronics. If you put a speck of dust next to a qubit, it will have a similar effect. However, the fact that the first animal was used to create a quantum computer doesn't sound bad at all. The saying goes, it is also to say again. Despite their impressive survival abilities, the tardigrade is not an extreme creature with the ability to thrive in harsh environments. It's just that they can withstand a thousand and one ways of torture that humans think is death. It's like a strong person who can carry a hundred pounds doesn't mean he likes to do it. It just means he can. Despite possessing abilities that humans crave, tardigrades are not immortal. In fact, the simplest and least labor-intensive way to kill a tardigrade is to let it die on its own. First, the average lifespan of tardigrades is quite short, only 3 to 10 months, water bear's legs cannot help them move far, so they often cling to another host to go faster, which is a snail. However, this method is also extremely risky because the snail's mucus can cause water bears to die. Not to mention, even though it is the tough king in experiments, tardigrades can still die in the stomachs of their enemies, such as nematodes, amoebas, or more stubborn tardigrades. In addition, a few minutes at 100 degrees Celsius or long-term exposure to high doses of radiation are still the death penalty for this resilient animal. They are also negatively affected by acid rain, air pollution, or heavy metals just like humans. You also don't need to worry about tardigrades. Water bear eggs are very small and can be carried everywhere by wind and water. 
Female tardigrades can give birth without a male. Finally, remember that the Earth server has held up to 5 resets and still has not sent the tardigrade off Earth. So, you just need to worry about liking this video and you'll be fine.